It's election day, big deal, big deal. I hope you're pumped. I hope you go out there and exercise the franchise all around the country. That's what we need to show those in power that we care and they must care about us. The balance of power in Congress now in your hands. Candidates all over the place, all up and down the ballots are going to soon find out whether their long months of pitches pay off. For Republicans, the party of Trump now officially, victory will mean validation. For Democrats, they're looking to wrest back control. So where are they in that fight? Let's get after it with New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker. Senator, thank you for joining us on Primetime. Chris, it's great to be on. I take a little personal insult that when I come to New York to see you, you hightail it down to D.C. where I usually hang out. <laughs> You're on to me, Senator. We'll, we'll, I'll take we'll it find our time. <laughs> okay. The check's on me, I promise. I oh. apologize for the inconvenience. No, it's a pleasure to be here, honestly. You know, yes. Everybody's talking about what happens if the Democrats win. This is the metric if they win. This is the margin. Will it happen? Let's reverse it for the second, just the sake of argument. What would it mean to you if sometime late, late Tuesday night or into Wednesday morning, it turns out that you've gained seats, but you don't take the Senate, you don't take the House? What would that mean to you? You know, I, I've just sort of surrendered hypotheticals. I got so wrapped up in that in 2016 and uh, was just wrong in every way. Right now, I am just focused fully on, uh, on just running through the tapes. Everybody should be focused on sprinting through the tape. Uh, even tonight when I finish this show, I'll go back to work calling into other states. I've got to call into Nevada workers. I think everybody should just put it all on the line, put it all on the field, and let's just see what happens. Uh, right now, the most important thing to me is, uh, is when polls close, working until then. Mm. You know, the tactics, everything becomes clear at the end of an election. There's never any mystery about what the game plan is on either side and what is inside the heads and hearts of all those inside. There's no more time for subtlety. And now we see that, and it's somewhat blowing up in the president's face. He put out that new Willie Horton ad, and it was as ugly as everyone knew it was when they made it. The president's saying, I don't know anything about the controversy about it, but it's enough that the news agencies are now following uh, CNN's example, and they're pulling the yeah. ads. It's not the only ugly ad. I want to play you just one line of an ad that is out there about Stacey Abrams and Oprah Winfrey. Just one line. That's all that's going to play from it. I won't allow any more of it. Okay. This is the magical Negro, Oprah Winfrey, asking you to make my fellow Negress, Stacey Abrams, the governor of Georgia. This is from some bunch of animals in the white supremacist group, but for some reason... They have felt empowered by this administration to come out and put out ads like that. The president today was asked about that vile ad with the Mexican murderer and him blaming you and other Democrats and these other ads that are done in his name or to support his agenda. I have the sound of the president. Here he is. We have a lot of ads and they certainly are uh, effective based on the numbers that we're seeing. A lot of things are offensive. Your questions are offensive a lot of times. So, you know. He's always offended by tough questions. But, Senator, the idea that he knows how ugly the ad is, and yet he says, but they're effective. What does that tell you? Well, again, we, we cannot become a country where uh, our leaders, but Democrat or Republican, is all about the ends and the means. Uh, there's no moral compass whatsoever when it comes to the means. Uh, we define ourselves by what we do. Uh, I think the ideals of Gandhi about in, ends and means really being the same thing. And so... For people to have a no holds barred, anything goes, whatever works, whatever makes money, whatever scores points, that, that's not the truth of our nation. We are a moral nation. And I believe that people are going to respond to that. I see it in my own state with the uh, kind of toxic ads that are now running against uh, Bob Menendez uh, that the Washington Post, Star Ledger, New York Times have all called outright blatant lies. Uh, those stuff come back to haunt you. And I do believe uh, that this is a moral nation and we uh, are disgusted by those kind of attacks. And so, you know what? Bring it. Bring what you got. Show who you are. Reveal your colors. Uh, because I think at the end of the day, this country is going to vote for decency, vote for honor, vote for kindness, uh, vote for love. And I'm so happy that there are leaders, uh, and again, not Democrat or Republican, but there are people in this country standing up for those ideals and voting in accordance to who's showing the kind of character that we want in office, uh, and in higher offices. The president says he's not on the ballot. Now, he's been all over the place. We've been showing clips of him saying, 
a dozen times. Vote for so-and-so. It's like a vote for me. Look at it as a vote for me. It's really like I'm on the ballot. I'm not on the ballot, but I'm on the ballot. Now, as we've gotten closer and there is somewhat of negative momentum on the Republican side, in terms of the House, at least, he's been backing off the House. He's focusing on the Senate. Now, today, he's saying it's really not about me. I'm not on the ballot. Do you accept that or do you think that whatever happens tomorrow, it is a referendum midterm on the president? Look, I, I don't accept what he's saying. I, I, you know, I, I learned from someone in my community in Newark, New Jersey, that hope, it doesn't exist in the abstract. Hope is the active conviction that despair will not have the last word. There's a lot of folks out there who've been listening to the president now for two years, the way he's talked about Nazis, the what he's done to people at the borders, uh, Muslim bans, uh, attacking health care, trying to rip it away from folks. There are a lot of folks who are going into this election saying he, the president will not have the last word. The president is not the end of the story. I'm going to be the last word. I'm going to show my, mm. uh, 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 my who, who I am, demonstrate who I am through my actions. And so this uh, election, I think it really is a test of that, that kind of those ideals of patriotism. And when I mean that word, politicians often use that word as a way to put down other people. I think patriotism is love of country and you cannot love your country unless you love your fellow country men and women. We don't always agree. We don't always like each other. But patriotism is not a slogan. Uh, right. Patriotism is an action. And I think that people are going to the polls right now because they want to define America. They want to have a statement. Trump has been dominating the airwaves, sucking the oxygen out. But this is the time, whether you're a president or, or a billionaire, whoever walks in that polls, we're all equal. And this is a time for the power of the people to demonstrate that they're more powerful than the guy that's in power. There's a difference between being a patriot and a jingoist or yeah. a nativist. Yes. Now, one point of concern. The big game is tomorrow. The big show is tomorrow. The big moment is tomorrow. Do you have any reservations that it wasn't more of the method of your party to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the president about immigration? Uh, when I ask you about it, you're going to give me answers. You're not on the ballot right now. But Democrats have been avoiding the president, ignoring the president, talking health care, now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on immigration. Why not? Um, look, look the, way he, the way he's going about this, Chris, and you know, a, a, as if our country isn't strong enough to deal with a lot of the 700 miles away, 800 miles away, people in a caravan. If he wants to make that the issue when people in my state of New Jersey are worried about their health care, uh, people in my state of New Jersey are worried about their retirement security, mm -hmm. uh, uh, public care about immigration. It's up there in the ratings. I, again, I, I think when I go, when I, I run, I've run around this country. I've been everywhere from North Dakota uh, to Florida, and and I, you know, when I'm sitting in diners, when I'm uh, walking in senior citizen centers, you know, as much as the president wants to try to whip up fear and hate, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of the the tired tropes. Uh, that he's that he's wielding out there. That Americans are concerned about the kind of things, the bread and butter issues, and I'm I'm, I'm happy that the that the people aren't falling for his trap again. Mm. I mean, here's a guy who came down that escalator and immediately started playing the race card, as they accuse us of doing. He talked about Mexicans. He talked about Muslims. He was trying to whip up fear and hate. And and our our history is not bereft of that. I mean, we have there's always been demagogues. There's always been bigotry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but the the story of America is the goodness of us overcoming that, of not allowing that to be the playing, playing field, uh, of not going down into the gutter, but finding the higher ground of common right. cause, common purpose. And so uh, I'm proud of the candidates that are out there that are talking about those issues. And again, I'm not just talking about Democrats. I this, gotcha. These are issues of, uh, uh, right now we're in a moment in America where it's not right or left, it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing a lot of voices from Christian evangelicals. What he's doing on immigration is an affront to the ideals of my faith, your faith, uh, uh, of so many faiths. So the, well, I'm hearing it from fiscal conservatives who are saying, how can this country blast a $2 trillion hole in the budget all to give corporations even greater profits when they're already at an 85-year high. I, I'm so proud of people on both sides of the aisle. I just got off of, uh, of a show uh, with the, the outgoing uh, uh, governor of Ohio. We were in the green room. I wish that was what was filmed, a Democrat and Republican having real conversations about issues that matter. This is a moral moment in our country. It is a moral 
moment in our country. It should be driving all of us to do what makes America great all the time, which is demonstrating we are here where we are now, because, not because right. of the presidents or the senators, but because of millions of acts of personal grace extended to other Americans, that kindness, decency, and love that drove the civil rights movement, which ultimately changed Washington, which drove uh, the, the protests against Vietnam War that ultimately changed our policies. It drove every great movement in this country came from those personal acts of grace of individual Americans doing their citizenship, not as a song or a slogan or a pledge, but their, their, their acts of grace towards other Americans and towards voting, getting out there and taking responsibility for their democracy. Well, we'll know tomorrow, Senator, which message wins, who the American people deliver the mandate to, and then the question will be, what is done with that mandate? And we'll be on it every damn day. Senator and Booker, I, I, Well, I haven't had a chance to say this to you. At a time that you and others are being singled out as being the enemy of the people, uh, I, I just want to say Godspeed to you. Uh, you have not flinched. You have not faltered. Uh, you're doing the job of media. You call people like me and others to the mat when you think we're wrong. You're calling balls and strikes in a way that this democracy needs. And what's different than us, than Russia, than Turkey, I can go through the other countries, is that we have a vibrant media. No matter how much a president wants to attack our Bill of Rights, that our founders thought it was important enough to talk about freedom of speech, freedom of the press. Uh, you guys here at CNN have stood strong, and I'm grateful to you in particular, and I haven't had a chance to say that publicly, but I just wanted to put that forward.